Hi, welcome back to A Better Way MD TV. I'm your host, Dr. Andrea Moore, and I wanna welcome you to week 12. Now, the past 11 weeks have been all about your food plan and developing the hunger scale and writing your food down and journaling um, and even giving up flour and sugar. And you probably think that you're all set and you may be feeling like, I can do this forever. And you could if you weren't human and you didn't have a human brain. Now think about all the other weight loss plans that you've been on. Maybe it's Weight Watchers or uh, Counting Calories or Low Fat or um, Keto Diet or Whole30 or whatever you followed. You have a period of time where you're all in and it seems like you can do this forever. And then about three to four months in, you notice that you start to slip either gradually adding back in food or stop eating the way you're supposed to, or you just give up one day and what we call fall off the wagon and eat all the things. And part of that is because your brain is responding to the lack of newness. Our brains love newness. And you have to believe me when I tell you that it's really about your brain and not about the food. And I'm going to give you a little example. If you'll go back to week 11 video, the last couple of minutes of that video, I want you to watch it. And I want you to see what you do when you hear the little notification ding. I promise you, you will either look to the right of your, t your computer or you will look at your phone to see who is dinging you. We all do it. And in fact, when that happened, I was going to re-record the video, but I thought, hmm, this might be a good teaching moment. So I want you to go back and look at it and see how your brain responds to newness. And your brain responds to newness because that's what our brains do. It likes to learn new information because the more information you know, the more likely you are to survive. And when you're not getting newness, your brain will hand you what I call the I want cycle. So basically your brain will give you a thought. I want pumpkin spice donut. And anytime our brain has a thought, it creates this chemical cascade in our bodies that we call a feeling. And the I want cycle creates this feeling of desire. And desire comes in many flavors. And maybe it's because we don't have enough words to describe it in the English language, but desire can be low or it can be super high. And when it gets to a point that's high enough, it's going to create us, create us to do an action. Um, so the cycle goes, I want, desire, and then you do something. So for instance, if you want a piece of toast, I want a piece of toast. You have a little desire, you get up and you go into the kitchen and you make yourself a piece of toast. But what if you wanted a, like a homemade piece of hot bread? You may have the desire for it, but that desire may not match the action that's required to get that done. So it's that whole I want cycle that keeps us doing things. And for food in particular, the brain has found that this is so successful that if you have the I want cycle and you respond to the urge, you get a little hit of a chemical called dopamine, which is the feel good hormone. And it works, it's worked really, really well to keep us alive, except that now our food has been engineered to really like ramp up our desire so that we can ramp up our dopamine. In fact, our desire is, in the words of Kanye West, bigger, better, faster, stronger. And it, when you have that much desire, it's going to create an action and you're going to get a huge dopamine response. So what do we do? Because we can't really get rid of desire. In fact, desire is necessary for our survival. If you take mice and you knock out that portion of their brain where desire is kind of created, um, those mice will stop drinking, they'll stop eating, they'll stop connecting, they'll stop having sex. They just basically lay down and die. So we have to have desire to live. But we don't want the Kanye West kind of desire, right? So how do we temper that? We temper that first by becoming super aware of the I want cycle. So I'm going to have you do two exercises this week. The first, I want you to write 10 things down that you really want. 
and it can be anything. It can be anything from a hard boiled egg to like one of the things that I really want that drives my desire is a Mercedes G550. And when I first saw the car and I snuck around the back to see what it was, because I know nothing about cars and I saw it and I was just like, I don't, I just had this huge desire, like really strong in my chest. I wanted that car. And when I saw Roy Kent in that car and Ted Lasso, that like up to the desire by 40 times. It was definitely Kanye West desire. So anyway, I looked up the car and when I saw the price tag and I realized the actions that would be required for me to accomplish the task of getting that car, I was like, okay, no, <laughs> that's not going to happen because I'm the girl that's driving the 2010 Ford Flex. So clearly I'm not going to buy a Mercedes G550, but you get the idea. So write down 10 things that you want and then at and don't do this, don't do all 10 at one time, do it separately. But I want you to sit and I want you to think, I want whatever it is for me, Mercedes G550 with Roy Kent, and see what kind of desire that creates. See how strong that desire is. Is it low level desire or is it Kanye West desire? Figure it out. And once you've done that, then the next thing I want you to do is to spend the rest of the week Seeing when your brain offers you the I want cycle about food. What is driving that I want cycle? I'm hungry, so I want. I'm anxious, so I want. Like, look at when your brain offers you the I want cycle for food. And notice what kind of desire it creates. Now, if you look at food in from the addiction model, um, then you can you will see how why it's so hard to change our behavior around food and desire and that I want cycle. So if you think about you know alcohol or drugs or shopping or gossiping, all of those things will create that huge desire for if that's what triggers your desire. Um, but they're not necessary to live. Like you don't really need to shoot heroin in your veins to survive. In fact, that's going to kill you. But we do need food. And so you have the substance that you eat on a daily basis that you need to eat for survival. And the trick is to bring down that desire so it's there enough to do your daily eating, but not enough that you are creating that Kanye West type desire and that huge dopamine release. All right. So again, 10 things you want. Learn how desire feels in your body. Two, go through your week and see when your brain offers the I want cycle for food. And just get real curious. That's all I want. Just curiosity. All right. That's what I have for week 12. Um, have a great week and um, really get curious and have a lot of fun with figuring out um, how desire feels and what stimulates your desire. And on that note, my dog, can you, uh, well, he's back there sighing because his desire is for me to get off this computer and to scratch his belly. So bye now from me and bye now from the Freck. <laughs>